Welcome back to the Cracking Paying YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem number 20, valid parentheses. I got a comment that I don't solve enough easy level questions for the beginners, so this is one for you guys watching. All right, given a string S containing just the characters left parenthesis, right parenthesis, right curly brace, left curly brace, left bracket, right bracket, determine if the input string is valid. And an input string is defined to be valid if all open brackets must be closed by the same type of bracket and open brackets must be closed in the correct order. So let's look at an example. We have this string here, S, uh, where we have left parenthesis, right parenthesis, left bracket, right bracket, uh, left curly brace, right curly brace. So we can see that the right curly brace closes the left curly brace the left bracket is closed by the right bracket and the left curly brace is closed by the right curly brace. Uh, so this one is true. Oops, let me change my pen color so you guys can actually see this. Uh, bear with me here. Okay, green. All right, so this one is fine. But what about this question? We have a left parenthesis and it's closed by a right parenthesis, a right bracket. Obviously this is false because they're not the same type of bracket. So the way that we want to solve this question is we want to use a stack here. And what we're going to do in this stack is every time we see a brace of a left variety, we're going to add it to our stack. So we're going to basically add it to our stack uh, as we see it. So let's walk through this example. So we're going to have our stack here. We're going to call this our stack and we see a left parenthesis. So we're going to add it to our stack to indicate that we've opened one. So now when we see a left for uh, when we see a closing parenthesis, so remember that our openers are going to be this left parenthesis, this left bracket and this left curly brace and our closers are going to be the right parenthesis, the right bracket and the right curly brace, right? So when we see something that is a closer, we need to make sure that the thing it's closing, basically the last open thing that we had or the top of our stack here actually matches. So we're gonna check, okay, this is a uh, right parenthesis. Is the top of our stack a left parenthesis? It is, so these two match, so we can get rid of this because it's fine. Now we see a left opening parenthesis, and we're gonna see, uh, sorry, left bracket, and we put it in there because we take all of the left parenthesis, uh, left, you know, brackets. And then we see that we have a right closing bracket and the left closing bracket is closed by the right one. So this is fine, we can remove it. Same with this one, we see a left curly brace, we add it to the stack and we now have a right one to close it so we can close it out and now our stack is empty, that means we have closed all of them. Let's look at this example and see what happens. So remember that we take all left parentheses and we take the left one so because it's an opener and we're going to put all of the openers in the stack and then we get this right one and we're trying to close a left parenthesis with a right bracket. Obviously they don't match so we cannot remove it therefore this is not a valid parenthesis. So whenever we have a closer we have to basically check that the top of the stack is actually um, there's a value here. First of all the, the stack can be empty which means it's invalid. So if we had something that was all right parentheses, obviously when we try to check against the top of the stack, because the stack only contains openers, we would never actually have anything to compare against, so we'd have to return false. So we're always checking whether any closer we get matches with whatever is at the top of the stack. If it does, we can remove that item from our stack because it now has been successfully closed and we can continue moving from left to right. Now there's a few more edge cases here, but we'll cover those in the actual um, code portion because it's starting to get a little bit messy here and it's easier if you just see it in code. So let's move over to the code editor and type this out. In the code editor, let's type this up. Remember that we need to keep track of all of the possible openers and all of the possible closers. So let's define those as data structures. So we're gonna say openers and this is gonna be a list. So this is gonna be all of the things you can open with. So this is gonna be the left parenthesis, the left bracket, and the left curly brace. Now we need the closers, and we wanna make sure that we define the closers in the same order that we did the openers. So we wanna make sure that uh, they match because we're actually gonna do a search by index later to make sure that they actually match on the index. 
So it's imperative that the order is the same. So we have the left uh, parentheses matching with the right parentheses, we have the left bracket matching with the right bracket, and we have the left curly brace matching with the right curly brace. So we want to make sure that they're in that order. If you guys mess up the order here, you're going to get the wrong answer. So make sure that they match uh, in terms of the indices. Okay. So remember that we need to stack here to basically keep track of all of our open parentheses. So we're going to have a empty stack here because we haven't processed anything. Now we want to go from left to right over our um, string s here. So we're going to say for char in s, we're going to say if the current character is in our openers, then we want to add it to the stack. So we're going to say if char in openers. So basically, if it's one of these three, then we want to add it to the stack. So we're going to say stack .append character. <clears throat> Otherwise, if it's not an opener, it must be a closer. Now, there are two cases that we need to watch out for. What happens when the stack is actually empty? So remember, this is the case where we have like basically all closers and there's nothing for them to be closing. Obviously, that's not valid because we're trying to close something which was never opened. So that's not a valid parentheses string. So we're going to say if not stack. So basically, if the stack is empty, then we have a problem because we have a closer, but it's not closing anything because the stack, remember, is only going to be storing openers. So if there's no openers, we can't close anything. It's invalid. So that's the first case. And the second case is the case where we have an opener in the stack, but the closer we just received is not valid, basically meaning that, you know, a left parenthesis cannot close Sorry, a right parenthesis cannot close a left bracket. So we need to make sure that the, the, uh, the closer is actually closing the right opener. So we're going to say if the stack is empty or the openers, uh, openers dot index of stack minus one. So stack minus one is the top of our stack does not equal to closers dot index of our character. Uh, then we want to be returning false because that means that we have a mismatch. If neither of these are false, then we can simply say stack dot pop and we're good to go because we know that that closer was closing the correct opener. At the end, all we want to do is just make sure that we have closed out all of our open parentheses. In the case where we have only open parentheses, right? If our string was just, you know, open parentheses, then we would put all of these in the stack and at the end it would just be filled with all of those items which means that we never close them so that's not a valid parenthesis so we need to just make sure that our stack is empty to make sure that we've actually processed everything so we're going to say return not stack which is basically going to return whether or not the stack is empty so let's now run this make sure that we haven't made any bugs and for some reason leak code is taking a while so let's submit this and we are good to go. <clears throat> what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm here? <clears throat> Excuse me. So for the time, you can see that we process uh, our characters one by one and we process each one once. So our time here is going to be bounded by however long our string is. So where uh, n is the length of the string. Now you might be wondering, wait, isn't dot index a big O of N operation and you're right, but not quite. The reason why it's big O of N and not big O of N squared, because we have this, you know, big O of N here is because we know off the bat that there's only ever three items in our openers. So because we know that the length of openers and closers is always three, we can think of the operation for finding the index as taking big O of three time. And because it's known ahead of time, this is a constant time operation and we can just think of it as big O of one. If the openers was dependent on however long uh, S was, then that would be a problem. But since we know ahead of time that it will always be uh, three elements long, we can treat it as a constant time uh, operation, which is why it is overall big O of N time. So space complexity wise, uh, we are storing our items in a stack. So this is going to be big O of N. Now, the reason it's big O of N is remember the worst case is that in our entire string is just left parentheses. And because we're storing all of the openers in our stack, it could get to the point where we just store all of them. And at the end, our stack just contains the original string. So because of that, the worst case space complexity is going to be big O of N. 
So that's how you solve this problem. Quite a simple one. This is a nice warm up question. Definitely one to know because a lot of companies uh, still like to ask this one. A good problem for beginners if you're um, you know, first working with stacks or just any kind of leak code questions in general. It's a good introduction to solving these types of questions. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps the channel grow. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye.